The Meaning of Marxism by Paul D'Amato. Section. How Parisian Workers Taught Marx. In her book, Marxism and Freedom, Raya Dunayevskaya reproves those who praise Marx's genius as though it got its impulse from the sheer development of his own thoughts instead of from living workers changing living reality by their actions. Marx and Engels, like the great Marxists who followed them, did not develop their ideas in a vacuum, but always in close contact with the class struggle. The first step in the revolution by the working class, Marx and Engels wrote in the Communist Manifesto, is to raise the proletariat to the position of the ruling class, to win the battle of democracy. But there hadn't yet been any experience of what a successful workers' revolution would look like when they penned these words. The Paris Commune of 1871 gave them their answer. Before then, it might have been possible to argue that winning the battle of democracy would simply mean workers taking over the existing state machine, that is, getting workers' candidates elected to political office. But what the Paris Commune taught Marx and Engels was that the working class cannot simply lay hold of the ready-made state machine and wield it for its own purposes. Why? We have already noted that the state is a product of class division, so long as a society is divided into classes, a state is necessary to keep the exploited check. In every prior revolution, the rule of one class has been replaced by another, but the state remained, the bureaucracy and armed forces simply being transferred from the defeated to the victorious classes. Indeed, the bourgeois revolutions of the 17th and 18th centuries produced even more bureaucratically top-heavy, centralized states than the feudal society, with larger armed forces, too. At the same pace at which the progress of modern industry developed, widened, intensified the class antagonism between capital and labor, Marx explained, the state power assumed more and more the character of the national power of capital over labor, of a public force organized for social enslavement, of an engine of class despotism. End quote. In March of 1871, the workers of Paris, organized into the Parisian National Guard, defeated troops sent by France's leader, Louis Thiers, to disarm them. Thiers had just been elected head of France's new republic after Napoleon's second empire was disastrously defeated in a war with the Prussian army. The peace terms required France to disarm and allow Prussian troops to march into Paris. But the Parisian working class refused to give up their arms. The workers rallied heroically around the National Guard militias, defeating Thiers' troops and compelling the bourgeoisie, their armed forces, and their political apparatus to flee Paris for Versailles. The Paris Commune was elected on March 26, 1871, and remained in power for only two months. Faithfully, it didn't follow up its victory by pursuing and disarming Thiers' troops when they were retreating from Paris. Nor did it attempt to spread the commune to other cities in France. This gave Thiers the breathing space to reorganize at Versailles and eventually fight his way back into Paris. The communards were crushed in an orgy of violence that took 30,000 workers' lives. Many socialists looked upon the commune as a foolhardy exercise. Marx understood the commune's weaknesses, but he leapt to its support, delivering a series of searing lectures in defense of Parisian workers and outlining the lasting significance of the commune. 
It had abolished conscription and the standing army. It decreed the separation of church and state. It began to devise plans to reopen factories under the control of the workers in them. And it abolished night work for bakers. But these achievements were minimal compared to the most important achievement of the commune. It was, argued Marx, essentially a working class government, the product of the struggle of the producing against the appropriating class, the political form at last discovered under which to work out the economical emancipation of labor. The communards turned direct suffrage into an instrument of the real rule of society by the majority. Instead of deciding once in three or six years which member of the ruling class was to misrepresent the people in Parliament, wrote Marx in his brilliant work, The Civil War in France, universal suffrage was to serve the people, constituted in communes. One of the weaknesses of the commune that Marx failed to note, however, was that suffrage was not universal. Women were not given the right to vote. Nevertheless, one of the striking things about the commune was the leading role played by working women, both in its creation and in its defense. Wrote one reactionary opponent of the commune, quote, During the final days of the commune, all of those bellicose viragos held out longer than the men did behind the barricades. Many of them were arrested, with powder-blackened hands and shoulders bruised by the recoil of their rifles. They were still palpitating from the overstimulation of battle. End quote. Marx elaborated on what made the commune so unique. First, Elected delegates to the commune were workers themselves, revocable at short terms, and paid at workmen's wages. Moreover, the commune wasn't set up to be a parliamentary talk shop, but a working body, executive and legislative at the same time. The police, under the bourgeois, a special force standing apart from society, in enforcing the interests of the rich, were, quote, turned into the responsible and at all times irrevocable agent of the commune. Much has been made about the fact that Marx and Engels used the term dictatorship of the proletariat to refer to a worker's government, as if they meant rule by an individual or a minority but they considered all forms of class rule, at bottom, dictatorships of one class over another. Engels answered this charge best when he said, quote, Of late, the social democratic Philistine has once more been filled with the wholesome terror at the words, dictatorship of the proletariat. Well and good, gentlemen. Do you want to know what this dictatorship looks like? Look at the Paris Commune. That was the dictatorship of the proletariat. End quote. Though it lasted only two months, the Paris Commune represented the first time workers had ever taken power. Its first lesson was that because the state exists as a, rep as a repressive apparatus to maintain the power of the capitalists, i.e. a machine for the suppression of one class by another. It cannot simply be seized by workers, but must be dismantled and replaced by direct workers' democracy based on recallable delegates elected by the workers themselves. In order to prevent the old order from regaining power, and in order to begin to implement a new social and economic program, workers need their own state, that is, the organization of the majority, to suppress the minority. Only when class antagonisms are completely suppressed can society do away with the state. Thus, by setting up a commune state, workers abolish the basis on which classes, and the state upon which they rely, 
survive. The state, Engels concluded, quote, is nothing but a machine for the oppression of one class by another, and indeed in the democratic republic no less than in the monarchy, and at best an evil inherited by the proletariat after its victorious struggle for class supremacy, whose worst sides the victorious proletariat, just like the commune, cannot avoid having to lop off at once as much as possible until such time as a generation reared in new, free social conditions is able to throw the entire lumber of the state on the scrap heap. End quote and end of section.